Right, Christoph, thank you so much for joining me. You're about to compete in your 11th World Championships, which must be absolutely exceptional for you. First things first, how are you feeling going into this one? And what is the secret behind this longevity that you seem to have at the top of this sport? Yeah, I mean, really excited. I think coming into it being a home world championships is is obviously massive. Um, but even then, I don't. I think every world championships we've along said it's coming up to my eleventh one. I still think um, I never kind of lose that excitement. Every year, it's still every. So you still get the opportunity. I never take it for granted. Um, so every time I get you know put on the team, it's always like you know it's a massive thing to be able to work towards. Um, I guess kind of yeah over. over over like you know the past 13 14 years as a senior it's kind of been really perfecting my trade and kind of really working out from for me one kind of what works best kind of what puts me in a good state that you know mainly making sure I'm motivated but then kind of being able to think about all the extra physical things all the mental things that I can kind of do um and it obviously comes to become a little bit harder obviously as I'm getting older the body's um definitely takes its toll on that a little bit um so I think me doing some coaching where I've had to really kind of understand kind of what goes into, you know, supporting the athletes and then kind of taking that a little bit and running away with myself, I think has um, helped as well. It's interesting, especially because you mentioned your mindset there and I've watched interviews with you where you've talked about watching other athletes perform and you've tried to mathematically work out the scores and all that type of thing. Is it your brain that sort of separates you from the pack? I think I think I've definitely used it to my advantage a lot of times. Um, it has definitely been a disadvantage as well. There's been plenty of times where I've overthought and you know, o- you know, overcomplicated things instead of just kind of going, yeah, right, you know, trust your instincts and kind of do what you do. Um, but as you said, there's definitely been a lot of competitions where I've really been kind of aware of what's going on and really tactically been able to kind of um, give myself the best shots to kind of you know, hit in kind of the top ranks in some of the competitions. Um, but I think, yeah, just kind of mainly, um, I think I'm always, my head's always in the sport. I, you know, I want to say I'm always thinking about what I can do and always kind of motivation. I think that's what kind of keeps me, keeps me going long term as well. It's very interesting this for you. Obviously, it's going to be in Britain, which is absolutely fantastic for you. But even more importantly, it's 10 years on from when you won your historic world gold. This thing, it feels like a fairy tale. Yeah, I, th- I think the the qualification day, so the day that we compete, is going to be ten years to the day um, from when I went last one. So I, I I never knew kind of how long I would kind of keep doing it. And I actually, it was a funny one in two thousand thirteen when I did win. Kind of a lot of people were saying, okay, you know, you know, what's next? Are you done? Kind of, you know, you've hit kind of maybe the pinnacle. And for me at that time, it was not, it wasn't something I'd ever. It wasn't it wasn't like a big goal. Um, it was something that just kind of I mean my first competition that I made the final in was the home world championships in 2011 and I remember coming fourth and I remember thinking that's it like I don't think it's ever going to get any better than that I kind of you know thought I I kind of hit the peak and I thought that's gonna be fantastic but I just kept enjoying it because I loved it then winning from that point of view it it changed the pressure a little bit kind of coming into some of the other competitions um, and maybe that actually is what I think what took me a little while to kind of get back into um doing kind of what worked best for me and I think that's kind of the success I've had kind of in the more recent years um so this year being 10 years on is going to be quite a special one that um it's going to kind of have a little bit of significance and and kind of a bit of nostalgia from that point of view um but I'm just going to kind of treat it like any other competition obviously it's been fantastic to watch you over the last decade doing so many things from a personal point of view but for the team for our country as a whole, you've really put us on the map, helping us win medals and making us a massive force on the world stage. I think, I mean, you know, there, there's been so many people who've had kind of a big input into, you know, making British tumbling as where it is. Um, even just to be a little bit part, it, it's it's nice to see people, team members come on who kind of had watched me when I was younger. Um, and, you know, that kind of, you know, as I remember looking up to a lot of people, you know, kind of a lot of my idols and big competitions. Um, so to see the kind of the, um, motivation that it still gave, gives gymnasts to kind of continue their careers has been great and I think that's actually been one of the most exciting parts of where we're at is seeing seeing the strength of where we are programmed now because as I said um, you know we are kind of one of the top competing disciplines um, you know GB you know we are we've kind of got a consistency about it and seeing so many people come into the sport and kind of really find their own and actually kind of push um, push the standards up has been great.
Rolling back the years now, can you tell me a little bit about your childhood, maybe some of your favourite memories, and how you eventually discovered this sport? And obviously, when you look at what you're capable of doing now, when you're doing everything that you do in this sport, it's incredible. The way you move, it's borderline inhumane. Could you imagine the first day you started being able to do the things that you do now? Yeah, not not at all. I mean, when I first came into it, I said, me as a child, you know, I, I was doing lots of different sports and I just had so much energy to burn. And I remember I was waiting for my sister to do gymnastics. They kind of just shoved me in, you know, and I, I obviously enjoyed just the throwing myself around uh, around the floor, essentially. I think that's kind of what tumbling is a little bit. Um, but I, I even think I even think back, it's, it's kind of funny one, when um, I was at kind of my first club and we were kind of quite a low level club um, in terms of tumbling. Um, and we used to see some of these big videos of people doing these things. And I remember we always used to joke about like, oh, look, we can do like a double, a double back. Um, we would just like kind of jump back twice and pretend that's what we were doing. Um, so at that stage, it was, you know, you see people and there was never, ever any thought you could ever get to that stage. Um, and I said, for me, I just kind of fell in love with the journey of doing it. Um, I never did it to kind of get to the top level. Um, and obviously we, we, we changed clubs and I had quite a big commitment there, but again, it was never to kind of do anything. It's just because I love doing it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of not nice to be able to reflect back when you kind of think of it as, you know, what, how you started as a kid and why you got into it. Um, and kind of just being able to look about how far you've come, because sometimes you kind of do forget that. It's interesting, this journey that you've been on from a child first walking into obviously becoming the athlete you are now. And in between that, I know at university you were studying biochemistry. Was it a difficult decision to put all your efforts into your sport? Was it was it tough for you? I don't think so. I, I think, I mean, because I made quite a bit, of, you know, quite a big commitment in terms of initially. I remember when the university, I was looking at universities near gyms. And then um, in the end, I picked a university that wasn't. Um, and I was kind of like, oh, you know, that, that's good. That's a big decision because I'm going to have to reduce my training potentially. Um, but because I think I was still so obsessed with it, still so passionate about doing it, it was kind of, I'm going to make it work. And kind of actually, even though it was quite difficult, it was kind of even the best years. That's when I kind of won my world and European titles. Um, so it was never difficult to kind of commit to it because it just, if that's the reason, I, when I went and did my training, it made, made, you know, that's what kind of made me excited and refreshed that when I came back in, I was quite motivated to still do my studies and vice versa. So um, it never felt like I had to make a commitment. It just felt like it was something I really wanted to do. And obviously when you're training, you've got to put so much work into it. So I imagine in your downtime, it must be nice to get some time to relax. What is it that you do with that period of time? Have you got TV programs that you like? Are you into your games? You like going out for hikes? What what floats your boat? We, I mean, as a long dist, as a um, kind of short sprint athlete, I've never we've never been able to do anything long walks. And me and my fiance, we started to be able to do stuff like that. So um, actually, something I've started to enjoy. But um, my kind of my main passion at the moment is is just kind of following any sports. Um, at the moment, um, we, we're, we're sat bang in the middle of NFL, uh, American football season. Um, so that's that's every Sunday at the moment. Um, and that's, you know, that's probably one of my biggest um, things I look forward to kind of as I get into sports. And I'm a big football supporter as well. Follow Everton, follow Plymouth. Um, so kind of any any sports on TV, when we get around to the Olympics, when we get around to that X Games, and, and anything that kind of gets put on TV, we get like, these big sport moments. That's kind of um, pulls me in. You're watching Everton obviously must be tough at the moment. <laughs> what sports the season been like from your perspective? I think we've had a cut. We've had a, for a few seasons now. We've had a bit of a, a reality check, and um, it's kind of uh, sticking through the tough times and seeing them, seeing seeing the players st- still keep um, keep fighting and passionate. I think that's the main thing that we want to see. So it's been a, it's been a whirlwind journey, but yeah, seeing um, seeing Liverpool back on top and us kind of. Um, Struggling still is a yeah, still a hard one to swallow. And getting back onto the spot that you've mastered, obviously you're renowned for this iconic hair flick that you've got. Are we going to be seeing more of that at the World Championships? Yeah, that's still there. I, I think, I mean, 2011, the last home World Championships is kind of, that was the year that started off. Um, it just turned into a little ritual that I quite liked. And I remember I, I at one point I was, I thought oh, I'm going to, I'm going to stop it. And then people kind of like, oh, you can't stop that. It's, you know, it's what you, it's what you do. It's iconic now. Um, so yeah, no, that, that, that will still be there to stay. That's uh, it's, it's a little changed. It's a little different from when I used to do it. Um, cause I, cause I use it as my mental preparation now to switch on slightly differently. Um, but yeah, it, it will still be there.
That's fantastic stuff, Christoph. That's filming with joy. I can't wait to see you do that, hopefully before getting another goal. But I'd like to thank you so much for giving me some time today. It's really appreciated. But before I let you Thanks go... Thanks for having me. No, you're absolutely very welcome. It's been a pleasure. But is there anything else that you would like to add? It's just, um, I, I, I guess one of, the, one of the main things that we kind of get always asked is kind of what... Um, what's our advice for kind of other people so it's nice I mean we're a very niche sport um but I think a anyone who kind of goes in it always is very passionate and kind of does it because they love it enjoy it and that's kind of the main thing I love to see that people do in sport at the moment is just kind of find out what they love and what they do and hopefully I said like it's nice even you know when a few people get to watch it kind of um on like BBC iPlayer and stuff like that and get inspired and whether they, they come into gymnastics or something else but they just kind of get that little inspiration to do to do their sport that they uh, can fall in love with.